Hi everyone, uh, this is Introduction to Computing for Creative Practice, week eight, and um, I am not uh, physically present in class because I am at the International Computer Music Conference in Shanghai, and so we're going to do things a little bit differently this week and next. Uh, we're, uh, I'm going to introduce material uh, through these short videos, as short as possible, and uh, the teaching assistants are going to be around to conduct the class in uh, some activities which we've designed and laid out for, for you. So it'll be a little bit more like uh, labs, but hopefully this will be a good way to learn. Maybe you'll like it better than the normal lectures. Uh, you know, let us know how it goes, and uh, eventually I'll be back, and uh, we'll continue from there. So uh, this is a special week. We had an exam yesterday. We have midterm break on Friday. And you've all got images uh, to learn about and use in a project in uh, the next uh, uh, day or three. And so uh, let's dive in and do images uh, real quick, and I'll get out of your way. So images. Uh, here's a P5JS sketch. It's got an image in it. Um, we've never seen images in sketches before. We've been working with geometric shapes and, you know, lines, circles, arcs, uh, which are very interesting and very amenable to computation. But when you combine computation with, with uh, photography and other forms of image data, um, all sorts of new possibilities arise. And so that's why we're looking at images. I think that needs no... Uh, further explanation. So let's just jump in and see how did we do this image? Well, here's here's the program that we're looking at and you probably should quickly notice there's one kind of new thing here uh, which is this function preload and inside preload there's the function call to load image. So the way preload works is uh, kind of like setup, you know, which gets called once by P5JS. It's a, a special P5JS thing. And draw, which is another special P5JS thing that gets called repeatedly to update the canvas. Uh, this preload function, if you define it, runs before anything else, and it's especially designed to load images. So why are images special? Well, um, images can be located uh, out on the web somewhere, so they might take a long time to load the image. Um, images are certainly loaded from outside your sketch. You know, there's no image in the sketch, right? So it's got to come from somewhere, and images can be big, and so it's kind of a long, slow operation. And so the, the strategy is we're going to load these images into variables so they're readily accessible and uh, quick to operate on. Uh, so we're going to load into these variables first before we let the program run and then we've got everything uh, ready to go locally and the program can run you know at animation speeds. The uh, preload also allows us to actually load images in, in, in parallel. So you might, you might have many images to load. And so by doing it inside preload, you can, you can start accessing a whole bunch of websites instead of loading things just one at a time. And, but you want to make sure that those loads actually complete before starting to run your program. So that's what preload does. It, it makes sure that um, all the loading is uh, done, finished, over with, and we're ready to roll before we even call setup. To load an image, you just give the name of the image uh, as a URL. And so I'm going to look at the way I set up my files here. Um, I have a directory that contains our standard index.html. It's got sketch.js that we were just looking at. And it's got an image, snailtrail.jpg. This name comes from uh, whoever it was that posted this image on Imgur, which is where I found it, uh, used the name snailtrail 
So this is the best attribution I can give uh, for that image. Okay, so we give the file name or the URL for the image. We load the image. And what gets returned from load image is a special value of type image. So we've seen types before. We've, we've considered numbers and strings and arrays are types, objects are types. And so here's a new, booleans are types. So here's a new type uh, called image. And, and since we have values of type image, we can just store those values into global variables like IMG. We could store them into local variables. We'll see that later. Uh, so, uh, so I've declared this global variable IMG to hold the image. There it is. And then when I want to draw the image, I use a new drawing function, you know, just like we've used functions like rect and ellipse. Well, now we have a new function called image. So the image function has five variables. The first one is the image itself that you want to draw. And the remaining ones are just like rect. It's the x, y, the upper left hand corner, the width of the image, and the height of the image. In, so for the width of the image, you, if you want to display the sort of natural image size, uh, you can use this expression image.width. So that takes the image, remember dot means, uh, you can read that as apostrophe s. Uh, so the image's width, or the width of the image, is this expression. You can get the image height using dot height. Uh, but in this program, I've actually scaled by x and y. And I'll let you uh, either talk about or come back on your own and see exactly how I derive scale x and scale y. Um, but we're not going to go into detail on that right now. Uh, so going back to the image, you can see that we're scaling independently in the x and y dimensions. If I put the mouse at the bottom right-hand corner, that gives me scale factors of 1. And this is the natural image size, uh, which happens to be 540 by 540, which I also printed out with a, a text command. So that's how we get an image up. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, some restrictions on these images, because the uh, um, images are uh, files, and um, we get these files from web servers if using URLs, or we can load them from the local file system, and, and there are some restrictions. So in particular, if I try to run this program I just showed you on Chrome, and that's what we're doing here. So this is, this is Chrome. Uh, here's my same index.html program. And if I load this in Chrome, it says loading, and that's all I get. It doesn't work on Chrome. The reason for that is Chrome, when JavaScript tries to load data from someplace, Chrome is very picky about where that data comes from because Chrome does not want to allow uh, some vulnerabilities, some security vulnerabilities that come when you allow a script on one machine to access data on another machine or on another web server. And I, I'm going to kind of gloss over all the details there. Uh, uh, but this is something that we have to deal with. Um, so I'm going to go through the different ways that you can load images. Uh, first one, the one we just looked at, simple local image file access with Firefox. Here, you just have a, a file and you write load image from that file. And uh, in my example, I just put the file name. In this example, I put dot slash file name. Uh, dot slash is a kind of special notation. Dot means it, look in the current directory. Slash means uh, 
within that directory and then find this file. So it's very, this notation is very explicitly saying, don't go searching for this file name. I want it from the current directory, like right here. Um, and this, uh, so either way works on Firefox, but again, it fails on Chrome. So another thing you can do, and this is, I think, you know, just to keep things simple, this is uh, the, the simplest way to do things, um, is use imgur.com. It seems odd, but if you uh, get an account on imgur.com, which is free, and just upload some files there, then and then you get the URL for those files, you can put those URLs into load image and things will just work. They'll work locally, they'll work uh, in, a, in a post, so you can just copy, get your code working locally, post it on WordPress, and it'll still work. Uh, why is that? Uh, the uh, key is right here. So imgur.com adds some extra information to images telling your browser it's really okay for anyone to access this image. Uh, so even if you're security conscious and, uh, uh, and your browser is Chrome and it, and it is pretty strict, uh, even uh, Chrome will, uh, uh, will access these images from Imgur, uh, from, from your local machine, from uh, within WordPress, whatever. So that's an easy way to do it. What if you don't want to use Imgur? You know, maybe you're working for a company and you, you don't want to put all of your art assets on uh, out for public consumption, or you just don't want to, you know, depend on Imgur, uh, which is, you know, it's been up for years. It's probably going to be around, but uh, it's not how you would do things if you worked for a company. So if you were if you were doing something private or working for a company, you can run a local server. So what does that mean? It means you're actually creating a web server on your own machine and accessing this this web server. And this will get around the uh, Chrome restrictions because as far as Chrome is concerned, it's going to a web server. The sketch comes from the web server. The image comes from the web server. Everything comes from the web server this, from the same place, so there's no security problem. And we've got explanations on how to set up your own local server. It's not hard. Hopefully you can do that in class today. So that's an option. Um, of course, if you do something with your local server and then you move this stuff over to WordPress, uh, your program's not going to run uh, without some alteration um, because WordPress is going to put your image in some different place. And so if you, if you want to uh, put your images, if you want to host images from WordPress, of course, you're going to have to upload the image to WordPress. And then you're going to have to, uh, in WordPress, uh, in your sketch, put the URL for the WordPress image. And we can see that up here um, from, from this example, uh, here is the, the load image from that example. And this is, I'm running on, I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, our course notes, which are on, on WordPress. So this is really running in WordPress. Um, when I do load image, I have to have this uh, awful detailed long URL, which is showing me exactly where this file RVD hats is located on the WordPress uh, website. Okay, but it's not that hard. You just do add media, you upload the image to WordPress, find the URL, stick it into your code, post the code, and test it. Be sure to test it because, you know, any, if you get the URL wrong, it's not going to work. And you can, and the disadvantage of all this is you cannot actually test this locally, uh, probably because locally you're going to be running the local sketch and it's trying to refer out to another site to get the image uh, and uh, Chrome will probably complain about that. All right, so those are all the ways to put images up. Um, let's look at rotation. 
A couple more things real quick. Uh, here's a image rotate uh, uh, example. Let's see if I can get this working. Here we go. Uh, so look at that, a rotating image. How do we do that? Well, you could probably guess how to do it. It's, it's exactly like drawing a rotating rectangle, except instead of calling rect, we call image. So that means we do push uh, to preserve the coordinate system. We temporarily alter the coordinate system with translate and rotate, as always. And then we call image, probably with uh, 0, 0 as x and y because we've already translated x and y using translate. In this example, I have the rotation goes from 0 to 90 degrees as mouse y changes from 0 to height. And I've got a scale factor. Where is scale? Up here. It basically goes from 1 pixel to full width. Uh, sorry, it goes from... Uh, 1 over width to width, uh, I'm sorry, to 1. 1 over width is the smallest value. 1 is the maximum value. That's the scale factor that varies with x. And so we can see that here is, if, as I move x, I get uh, scaling from a pixel to full, full size. And as I vary y, I get uh, rotation from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. Next up, let's talk about uh, image clipping. So here's a little program. I'm, I'm showing the full image at one-third size. And as I move the mouse around, you can see down at the bottom left, I'm showing a, a magnified little sub-image. Pretty cool. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple to get what we do is we just get a sub-image and we show it. So how do we get a sub-image? Uh, we take the image and write dot get. Uh, so this is finding the get function from the image. And uh, we pass four parameters to get, which is the, the bounding rectangle of the sub-image uh, relative to the coordinates of the image. So Offset is x, y uh, in this example, and it's a 100 by 100 sub-image. This image.get does not display the image. It just um, clips out a little sub-image and makes a new image. So now we assign that to a variable called smaller. And now we have two images. We have img, which was the full image, and we have smaller, which is some sub-image. And so we use another image command down here to display smaller down at the lower left-hand corner. And we magnify it from 100, 100 to 180 by 180. Uh, so let's take another look at this real quick. So you can see the uh, this was originally a 100 by 100 image in the lower left. It's now displayed as 180 by 180. and the location in the image that I clip from is controlled by the mouse location. And finally, um, we're not going to do anything with this today, but I want to point out this uh, interesting example that shows how you can access pixels from an image. Uh, the, the key to that is you, you call image.get, but with only two parameters, x and y. And that gets a pixel, which is uh, uh, basically a, a color. And so then we're going to set fill according to this color and call ellipse. So we're going we're to make an ellipse whose color is determined by a pixel in an image. Well, that's pretty cool, because that's, that's going to generate this uh, very pixelated image, and we can't really see anything yet. But if I let this run for long enough, and you can go, go to it yourself, 
um, eventually we'll, we'll get to see the underlying photograph, which is uh, an astronaut walking on the moon. So we can see some dark outer space and some gray uh, lunar landscape, and you'll see details later. So that's it uh, for today. Uh, good luck with images, and you can spend the rest of the class um, implementing some of these exercises and getting help from TAs. So thanks. I'll see you next week.